Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. In this video, we are gonna discuss about isolation of streptomycin resistant mutants of E. coli by gradient plate method. Gradient plate method is a very smart technique to determine the ability of certain bacteria to produce mutants that are actually resistant to antibiotics. So, to produce these mutants, we grow the wild type bacteria on a gradient plate of a particular antibiotic, in this case, streptomycin. So, in this method, a double layered agar plate is developed, which is formed of, you can say, two different wedge like layers of agar medium. These are the requirements. You can have a look. Without wasting time, let's go to the procedure. First step is preparation of streptomycin gradient agar plate. So, two tubes containing agar are melted in a hot water bath, which are then allowed to cool. Then, a sterile petri dish is brought, and under one end of this plate, a pencil is placed. The pencil causes the plate to get lifted from one end. After this, sufficient amount of the molten agar is poured onto the petri plate. The agar is allowed to solidify in the slanted position. Then we bring second tube with molten agar. And here is our streptomycin solution. So with the help of a sterile 1 ml pipette, 0.1 ml of the streptomycin solution is added into second agar tube. The tube is rotated so that the antibiotic solution can be mixed with agar. But you need to avoid making any bubbles. Now, as we know, the agar in petri plate is already solidified. So, we remove the pencil and place the petri dish horizontally. But you need to do something before pouring the agar with antibiotic. So, we should mark the both ends of the petri plate, the end of the nutrient agar slope with high agar is marked as low streptomycin concentration. Similarly, the other end of nutrient agar slope with low agar is marked as high streptomycin concentration. Once this is done, the molten agar medium having streptomycin antibiotic is then poured in the petri plate in such a way that it entirely covers the gradient agar layer. The gel is kept to solidify. Second step is observation of colonies and streaking. So this is the E. coli bacterial culture we are going to inoculate. By using a sterile 1 ml pipette, 0.2 ml of the E. coli test culture is added on the plate. Then, with the help of a bent glass rod, which is dipped in alcohol and flamed, we spread the test culture over the entire agar surface. The plate is then incubated for 24 hours at 37 degrees centigrade. Now we are gonna observe the second day result. So, we will have two types of colonies. The nature of the colonies depends on which side of the pottery plate they are formed. So, end of the plate with low concentration of antibiotic, we will observe wild type colonies. These will be more in number. At the opposite end of the plate, E. coli mutant colonies may be produced. These would be few in number. So, in order to confirm whether the colonies formed on high concentration side are permanently resistant or not, the selected colonies are streaked towards the high concentration end of the plate with a sterile inoculating loop. The plate is then incubated for 24 hours at 37 degrees centigrade. And if on the third day we observe the growth of 
strict colonies on the high concentration side of antibiotic on the pateri plate. It indicates the permanent nature of the mutation. This was all. Thanks for watching.